Hi everybody, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my career on osteoporosis and longevity. Do you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and you think that you have your diet nailed? Well, think again. Studies show that there is not a single designed diet that actually meets all of the micronutrients and macronutrients that you need to support general health and definitely not bone health. So stick around for our favorite seven vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids that you must have in your diet if you're focusing your diet for your bone health. All right, so number one is calcium, probably number two is vitamin D, and it's almost cliched at this point to hear that we need calcium and vitamin D for bone health. I think most of us, especially if you have osteoporosis, you know that that's true. But let me just dive in a little bit on how much calcium and where to get calcium. So preferably you're gonna get calcium from your diet. If you can tolerate dairy, dairy is a good source of calcium. If you can't, it's pretty hard to get enough calcium in your diet. We tell our patients to aim for 1200 to 1500 milligrams of calcium a day. If you're not meeting that through diet, then you really do need to focus on some kind of supplementation. We're going to have a whole nother talk on supplementation. So I'll just leave that here to say that the best form of calcium uh, from diet is probably going to come from dairy. Um, and it's going to be the best absorbed because it's coming with vitamin D. It's coming with protein. It's coming with dietary fat. So we'll leave it at that. All right, I mentioned vitamin D earlier. Vitamin D is one of the most important vitamins that you can get. It's also called a pro-hormone. That gives you an idea of just how important it is. It's involved in so many reactions uh, throughout the body, supporting hormone health, supporting immune function, and bone health. So vitamin D will increase your calcium absorption. Um, vitamin D will also help to utilize calcium and will continue to push the cells that make bone, the osteoblast, to continue to make bone. So vitamin D is absolutely critical to bone health for more than one reason. We tell our patients to aim for, uh, on a blood test, between 80 and 100. Um, that is um, much higher than you're gonna hear from other providers. The reason why we push the needle on that so far is that you really start seeing increased benefits all the way up to around 80. And then we just give you a little buffer up to 100. I would not recommend going over that. I would recommend testing and make sure that you're not going over that because everybody's utilization of vitamin D is very, very different. So make sure you're working with somebody that can test this for you. But this is what we're recommending to our patients. All right, now the next one is vitamin K. So vitamin K is sort of a kind of a newer player on the market. It, it certainly has existed before this, but it was really talked about mostly in the space of avoid vitamin K if you're on certain medications for blood thinning, particularly Coumadin. Vitamin K though has been found to work independently to help with calcium metabolism. So vitamin K will help to put calcium where it's supposed to go. We've probably heard that calcium, if it's consumed in the wrong form or too much or the wrong time, can end up in other places. And that is true. It appears that it can end up in arteries. It can end up in organs where you don't want it. Taking vitamin K can help to put it in the right place, which is in your bones. The question is how much, what form, what time, where does it go with? So the way that I like to recommend it for my patients is to use a product that has vitamin D3 and K2 in it. K2 specifically is MK7. So K2 um, has a couple of different forms. MK7 has a longer half-life. You only have to take it once a day um, and it comes in good quality products with vitamin D3. So this is what I'm recommending to my patients. The amount varies a little bit, so I'm not gonna make a recommendation on that. Um, for the products that I use, the amount is relatively set. But I did mention that this is not about supplements, this is more about food. So where can you get vitamin K from food? It's kind of tough. Vitamin K2 is made mostly by your gut microbiome. There's a little bit of K2 in cheese because it's already been made by another microbiome. Um, so K2, which is the product that we really want, is not something that you can get through food, but you can eat food that supports your microbiome, which will then make vitamin K2. Vitamin K1, you can get through plant products, but it doesn't have the same effect. So if you're eating a lot of plants to get vitamin K, know that you're not really getting the K2 that you need. The next mineral I want to talk about is potassium. So potassium you find in vegetables, a little bit in fruit, um, and potassium is a great mineral for your bones. It is so because it helps with calcium metabolism. It helps to keep calcium in the bones where it belongs. It helps with your kidneys to uh, minimize the loss of uh, calcium in your kidneys. If you look at studies on potassium, 
Um, there's a Korean study that actually showed that the highest intake of potassium was associated with increased bone mineral density in women and actually reduced NTX, which is a, a bone turnover marker in urine. Um, we use a blood turnover marker that's very similar called CTX, but highest intake of potassium associated with the lowest levels of NTX in this Korean study. So it does show that um, these are associations, but the higher potassium intake did have a significant impact on bones. So it's important to get adequate potassium in your diet, dark leafy greens, fruits, this is one that you should be able to get if you're getting good quality food, you should be able to get adequate potassium. You can try to measure it. And if you're not getting adequate potassium, this is something that can be supplemented as well. So the next, but certainly not least important is magnesium. Magnesium is involved in over 300 metabolic actions in the body. So magnesium is being used by the body all day long, every day. And it's also getting harder and harder to get enough magnesium from the diet because plants get magnesium from the soil, animals get magnesium from the plants that get magnesium from the soil, and our soil is getting depleted of magnesium. So um, this is one that also is gonna hit the supplement side because we need magnesium in adequate amounts and it's getting harder to do it through diet. All right, why do we wanna get enough magnesium? Because it supports both calcium and potassium metabolism. It supports osteoblasts, the cells that make bone, proliferation. It is absolutely critical because it activates vitamin D. And we've talked about how important vitamin D is. So magnesium, without it, all the K, all the calcium, all the D is not gonna be adequately utilized. So we really do need to get adequate magnesium in the diet. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can send you a notification when we post new material to the channel. More importantly, if you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them so that we can get them the information that they're looking for regarding bone health. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about osteoporosis and about how we manage osteoporosis, please look for the link for a masterclass in the description of the video below, and that'll get you signed up for a masterclass that's absolutely free, where we go into more detail on all of these topics. All right, now the next one is vitamin C. So vitamin C is really important because it is a antioxidant, so it's good for your immune system, is also a cofactor for osteoblast differentiation. And that means when our stem cells become osteoblasts, they have to sort of be pushed in that direction and vitamin C pushes them in that direction. Research shows that higher vitamin C consumption is associated with better bone mineral density and lower fracture risk, which is ultimately what we're going for. All right, now the next ones are B vitamins. So I put these all into a group. Obviously there are different B vitamins, but as a group, B vitamins are really important for a lot of things. One of the things that we notice with B vitamins is that when you are B vitamin deficient or don't utilize them appropriately, which is genetically driven, there is a biomarker that rises called homocysteine. So we use homocysteine for a few different things, but we can use it as a marker of B vitamin quantity and utilization. When it's elevated, we know that homocysteine is associated with lower bone mineral density and increased risk of fracture. So when we look at studies that either replete through supplementation or through diet, particularly B12, we can see that as B12 climbs, there is a significant reduction at each step of B12 going up of fracture risk coming down. So it's really important to get B12 and all the other B vitamins through your diet. Now here is something that not everybody knows, which is in order to get all of the B vitamins, you actually have to eat animal products. B12 in particular is only found in animal products in any appreciable amount. So if you're eating a vegan and vegetarian diet, make sure that this is something that is on your supplement list. All right, now the last thing we're gonna talk about are omega-3 fatty acids. So this makes the list because they are involved in so many different things throughout the body. It's a really complex topic, but here's the brief version of it, which is omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are more commonly known as fish oil is a good source of them. So fish oil or omega-3 fatty acids have to be in the right balance with omega-6 fats in the body. Our Western diet, our standard American diet, really pushes high omega-6 quantities and really low omega-3s. This tends to be really inflammatory. We know that chronic inflammation is associated with osteoporosis. So we wanna push that the other direction. Now the research behind 
omega-3 polyunsaturated fats is actually pretty good for bones because there are some clear mechanisms where polyunsaturated fats, particularly omega-3s, will improve the function of some of the hormones around bone metabolism. They will actually push the development of bone through some of the same mechanisms that the pharmaceutical drugs actually utilize to help do the same thing from a pharmaceutical perspective. So it's really important that you're getting adequate omega-3s in your diet. The best source of omega-3s is going to come generally from smaller fish. There's some concern about the toxicity of the seas and heavy metal accumulation in fish, and that's absolutely true. So while eating things like salmon can be okay on an occasional basis, you do have to be careful because if you're eating, let's say, salmon every night, you're likely going to get some bioaccumulation of toxins and heavy metals. To avoid that, eat smaller fish. So you can eat things like sardines, um, anchovies, mackerel, those um, smaller fish that generally come in little tins, those are gonna be generally lower in toxin content, lower in heavy metals. Um, and if you can tolerate them, they're an incredible source of protein and omega-3 fatty acids. All right, so that's it. Those are the seven vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids that we can really push on to get in through the diet. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications from our channel. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them. The more people you share this with, the more people that will be driven to the channel so we can continue to educate people on bone health. And if you are interested in learning more about how we manage bone health, please sign up for the free masterclass that's in the description below so that you can learn more about how we manage bone and I can educate you on all the other things that you can do on your own to help improve your bone health. And lastly, we want to hear from you. Please leave in the comments questions that we'll answer when they come in. Uh, what topics you would like for us to talk about. I'm happy to put together information and research on anything that is relevant to this channel. So please let us know what you want to hear. Thanks again for listening. Thanks again for your time. We'll see you in the next video.